Welcome back to the finale of Parasite Eve 2. We just took out a major boss and are about to save Eve. We cannot leave because she has to save Eve. So what I did is I actually defeated that boss again on my own time. And I didn't use any rifle rounds, if you can believe it. I am fully, fully ma maxed out on the rifle rounds. So yeah, I don't know how I did it. I guess I just used the, the this grenade launcher a bit. Also, because... Coming up, you know, is the uh, finale of it. We don't need this medicine wheel equipped anymore. The the meta medicine wheel is for getting bonus items at the end. There's no point, so I just replace it with a ringer's solution. Okay. There's only one thing left for us to do, and that's to head over to this area and use the card to lower down this uh, bridge area. It's like right here, right? Hang on, wait, maybe... Oh, it, it's on the other side. I see it. I see it. It's on the other side. Oh, I, I went all the way around. Yeah, anyway. Here it is. Right here. Maintenance bridge. It has a card reader attached. Don't be shooting it, Aya. Okay. So we have... Bowman's card. Let's use it. The key card worked. I, uh... Oh no! The foreskin monster! He came back. Eve! Aya! Oh, this is not good. Yep, for final boss time. Eve. Evil Eve. All right. Just gonna head on over here. Don't mind me. I'm gonna power up. Again, don't mind me. And let's let's try necrosis on you. Yes. Look at that damage. That did a lot of damage. Over a thousand. There you are. Oh gosh, okay. Reload. You still uh, necrosis? Oh yeah, yes she is. As you can see, she has a lot of health. We've already done like well over 3,000 damage to her. Reload a little more. There she is. Okay, she did something to us. Hold on. Let's cure that. Avoid it. Okay, she's making clones of herself. Got some clones. Let's heal. Not too bad.
Okay, okay, I have to remove this. Pronto. And I have to heal, too. Destroy this darn clone. Kind of getting in my way. Okay, you know what? You know what? Um, I'm going to do a ringer solution. Good. Okay, and now... Let's do energy ball. Ah, oh, great. Oh, she got rid of all of our MP. She may kill me here. Look at this. This is insane. Ah. Uh. I feel that feeling that uh, she's almost dead. She's almost dead. You know what? I gotta use another uh, ringer solution here. Okay. You need to reload, ma'am. Okay, great. Because she can steal all your MP. She's dead. She, has, she had a lot of health. Defeated, woman. You're dead. Now, I do want to mention, as we are approaching the ending here, depending on how good that we did, there's a bad ending, a normal ending, and the best ending. And they're told in sections. So we, how it works is if you get the bad ending, you only see a little bit. If you get the normal ending, you see the first part and the second part. If you get the best ending, which is what we're about to see, you see all three segments, okay? So I, I will mention when that segment stops because I have a feeling like for a lot of people, when they first play this game, you're probably going get, to get the bad ending. You're probably going to get the bad ending, which means you don't see the full story. But we got a lot of experience. We got a lot of BP and HP and MP. So let's go ahead and check out the ending. So the first se segment here, this is what you would s see during just like the, the uh, bad, bad ending. Aya? Aya? Kyle? Kyle, is that... I... You're alive. Yeah, more or less. Where's Eve? She's fine. She's sleeping next to me. Whew. Kyle, I... There's a lot I have to tell you. Me too. But now it's not the. T but now it's time to rest. But I, when I first met you, I. Hey, someone's down over here. A young woman and a child. We got two down. They're warm. Hey. You okay? 
You sure are lucky we found you in one piece. Medic, over here. Okay, so that is the bad ending, the medical rescue. Now this is moving on to the second segment here. This is where, if you got the normal ending, you would see this, this segment. Thanks to misactions, casualties were kept to a minimum. I see. Good. You have to invite that attractive hunter and her friends. And the media. Most of them are broadcasting the cultist nuclear attack story. So the disinformation worked. Well, it was quite a sensational incident. Any reports linking this to what happened in Manhattan? None at this time, sir. Excellent. All of our resources are focused on removing evidence. By the time the press gets in, it'll be emptier than Roswell. What about Russia and China? Any concerns about the railgun? China? No need to worry about that. We'll be releasing CG doctored images soon, showing a... Microwave m misfire from a solar power collecting satellite. I think our neighbors will appreciate our quest for clean energy. Hmm. It's just one thing. What's that? That agent we sent. He said he was resigning and hasn't been seen since. What? He knows too much. He must be found and brought in. I've already given the order, sir. Just think. Our in international authority would suffer if this came to light. Not to mention that our allies, we cannot allow that to happen. Okay, that's what we would see for the normal ending. Now, on to the best ending. It's been, okay, so that is where the normal ending would stop, so now we're on to the best ending section. It's been almost a year since then. The FBI moved into action, arresting some of its own and some missed officers. On charges of collaboration with a private organization. However, all information regarding the organization running the shelter has been classified. Nothing was ever explained, and we were slapped with a gag order. The report released to the public explained the events as an armed cultist uprising and its suppression. Just like that, the case was closed. Neo-mitochondria were filed and forgotten. But we weren't going to just sit around twiddling our thumbs. Following Baldwin's arrest, Rupert took the senior post. He's working with Jody on a secret project, the full public disclosure of MIST and the NMCs. The Japanese biologist Dr. Maeda has proposed the new superhuman theory. By identifying neo-mitochondrial DNA, he calculated the frequency of latent carriers over a 10-year span. His theory that these carriers would lead the evolution of the human species is not widely accepted. It was enough to interest Hearse. He's working with Dr. Meta, looking for carriers over the net. He's really hit it off, and their project's going well. Pierce thinks that my case, in which the neomitochondria merely strengthened their hosts instead of taking outright control is the true path to mutual pros prosperity. They intend to educate possible carriers before they transform and thereby reducing the occurrence of NMCs and the persecution of carriers that would follow. It's clear from the, his devotion 
Pierce has found his life's work. His character has changed, too. No more timid Pierce. Jody is greatly relieved, too. Rupert pulled some strings in the FBI for me and Eve. She's now my younger sister, no questions asked. She's been going to junior high for a month now and loves it. Her face reveals nothing of her dark past. She is full of life and quit popular and is quite popular at school. It also seems she's lost her neo-mitochondrial powers. Mr. Douglas was seriously injured in the explosion, but he's recovered and is now rebuilding Dryfield. He sent me a picture of a rifle scope. Price tag attached. We've all dealt with what happened our own way. Started new lives. Only Kyle hasn't been seen. Not since that day. I run searches for him now and then, but no luck. I haven't even found a trace. If he hadn't shot me, I'd wonder if he really existed at all. But he saved Eve, and he saved me. Or was it all a dream? I hope he didn't get in trouble on account of his helping us. In the meantime, I'll keep searching. After all, he was the one who told me, never give up. Tomorrow, I'm taking my first vacation in a long while. Pierce got Eve and me passes to the Na Nature Museum. Eve craves knowledge. She's so excited about tomorrow, she can't sleep. I have to brush up if I'm going to be able to answer her questions. September 1st, 2001, 7.16 p.m., Natural Museum in New York. Look who it is! It's Kyle! So, I like that ending. That's a really good ending. It's like, finally now, all this is kind of behind them, and now they can focus on, I guess, releasing this information to the public, trying to get, get around that. And that is the, the the true ending, and it's a shame you, you. It was so hard to actually get get that ending. You had to do so many specific things. So for for the bad ending, just 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 the medical part. This is if you don't, according to the guide, it is if you don't save Pierce in Dryfield, or you save Pierce in Dryfield, but don't go to the pod service. Gigante after getting his the phone call within the nur nursery, and then you will meet Rupert at the military base. So yeah, that is the bad bad ending. For the normal ending, we see the medical rescue and the conversation with with the president, <clears throat> the Washington D briefing. That is if you save Pierce and Dryfield. And after reaching the, the uh, nursery, return immediately to the pod uh, service ganty and check the phone. You will find a message left by Pierce. And then you have to read the message and call Jody afterwards. If you meet Jody at the military base, you will get the medical rescue ending and the Washington de debriefing ending. So even just, just that, to get the bad ending, it's... You may not save Pierce, so that will very likely, during your first playthrough, get get the bad ending. And it's like, okay, I want to get a better ending. So you do some of this other stuff, and you save Pierce, and then you get the normal ending. It's like, how do I get, get the best ending? 
Well, after you do all that, you have to, after meeting Jody at the military base, you have to go to the Golem Freezer to rescue Pierce. You remember, you have to rescue him twice. You have to rescue him again in the Golem Freezer. And then you would get the medical, medical, medical rescue ending, the Washington debriefing, apparently with, with some slightly altered dialogue for the true ending. Apparently, it's not exactly the same, it's slightly altered. And then you get the epilogue and then the the cut scene at the very end where Eve and Aya see Kyle come come back in the in in the um, in the scene here. So yeah, those are the endings. Now, of course, I mean this this was my first time playing this, so I I knew I knew that that there were different endings, and I wanted to make sure that I got the best one. So that's why I, I used a guide. So I wasn't completely in the blind with it. If I was, then yeah, I would. That that is part of the problem with this sort of game. So my my thoughts on this, I would have to say like if if it's your first time playing it, you're gonna have a hard time. For sure, because I, I have a feeling this this is the style of game that your first time playing it, you could very likely make it moderately far and then run out of supplies, may not be able to, to, to defeat the final boss, and there would be a lot of problems there to say, like, okay, I'm just kind of done playing because I don't want to start a brand, brand new game. That could basically be what ends up happening. You run out of supplies. You can't defeat the final boss. What are you going to do? You know? Got to start all over. And conserve your supplies now that you know what you're doing a little better. My overall thoughts about it is initially I really didn't care for it too much. I had seen, again, I had seen a playthrough of it, so I kind of know what I was expecting. And I, I think it started off really strong. When we went to the Acropolis Tower, I thought that that was fantastic. Also, by, uh, by the way here, once we completed all the items we don't use, it gets tallied up into BP. So we have a ton of BP. So we got a lot of experience in BP, and then you can re replay the game with, with that sort of stuff. Looks like we also unlocked the AS-12, the R-Slug, that we can all purchase from the shop, the Firefly. Go ahead and save. So, yes. Now, I th th there are a few bonus things that I do want to show off after I'm kind of done talking about what I what I thought about the game. So, just watching when you went when we went to the Acropolis Tower, and when I was watching a playthrough of it, the very beginning of the game interested me a lot. And I kind of thought the whole game was going to be like, okay, you are a mist hunter. You're 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 defeating NMCs. You go to various lo locations, defeat the enemies. You come back to Miss Headquarters. You go out for another mi a mission. I think that would have been really interesting. But what happened was, after you complete the Acropolis Tower, you come back to Miss, and then you go to Dryfield, and you're basically in Dryfield for the rest of the entire game. I mean, yes, you, you do go to the shelter and the Neo Arc below Dryfield, but you're basically in the Mojave Desert the entire rest of the game. And Dryfield in itself, it starts off really interesting. Like everything is, de is de desolate. There's some creepy person looking at you from out of the shop. Everything's all locked up. It's very, it's very creepy. And then you just spend so so much time there that that it becomes so boring it really does it's like oh i just i just want to get out of here and then after all of that you finally finally make it to the shelter and the and then the neo arc and that's where i i really started to actually like the game a lot and i have to say just just based on that i would have to say that i i i do like certain aspects of this game more than i do the first one initially i didn't like it as much but Certainly some things about it I like more than, than the first one. I would say the story is on par with, with the first one. I, I would say that they're close close to... I feel as though there's much more urgency in the first game as opposed to this one. There's a lot more urgency because it's only like a few days. The gameplay, I would have to say, they're also closer about the same. But early on in this game, it is very, very, very... 
hard because you don't have a lot of supplies. You really don't don't know what you're doing. You, you're not really by conserving stuff. You don't have good items. So in that way, I I, I really do not like I like that. But later on, if you're saving stuff, you have a, de a decent amount. So that that's actually pretty pretty good. Um. I think the biggest weak point besides it, you know, being very hard and challenging at times and besides some of a lot of the boringness in dry field, um, a lot of the backtracking is, I think, really bad about this game. Like if you just look at dry field, for example, you go to dry field, everything's locked up and it takes you forever to finally fully unlock it all and move out of dry field. It's like you're in this area for like a, hours, hours upon hours, and it's like you're slowly making progress in it. It's like, okay, and that's how the whole game is. And then you have to do a lot of backtracking to kill all the enemies, all that sort of stuff, which I did because I wanted the most experience, because I know that that was going to make it a little easier for me, as opposed to just going in and not getting any experience, not leveling up anything. So it made it a lot easier. The other problem is the music. Probably the best song in the game is this opening scene here, because it's basically a remix of the first game's opening sequence. The music in this game, I had to say, is... It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. I think that there's some good quality moments, but it's basically just like silence. It's like... The music is so quiet in this game that... The sound effects, the gunshots, all that sort of stuff is way louder than the actual music is. It's like, is there music playing right now? It's like some maybe light a ambience or some like a few sounds like in dry field. It's like, is that music? It's like, yes, it is. It is. It's on the soundtrack. That is a track, you know, on the soundtrack. And it is music, but it's like, is it though? <laughs> you know? So I think that has been its absolute weakest, weakest point. So overall, though, I have to say, I, in some ways, I, I do like this one more than the first one after playing th through the whole game. Now, I should mention, let's go ahead and hit continue. And because we did, did that, let's go ahead and change to disc one. There, there's a few extra things that I want to show off before we conclude this game out. After you've completed the game and, and you load up your a save. Actually, is, is it even allowing me the option right? right there it is. Okay. So we actually don't have the, a full list here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to load up a completed save. I'm going to load up a completed save file. Let me go ahead and just re reload that. <clears throat> because there's actually some really cool stuff in this game that you can do. So <clears throat> let me load up my mem memory card here. And I'm going to load up a complete save. Because this game does have other game modes if that does interest you. And there's quite a few, but unfortunately we do not have them all un unlocked. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so I should be able to load now. Okay, I I believe let's say I may have to just close out of the game and, and restart. That, that's let's check. Yeah, okay. Let's actually restart one more one more time. Now that I have done I done that. Okay, I may just have to close out of the in entire program. Hold on. Let's make sure that my me memory card is correct. Oh no, it didn't. It didn't save the memory card. That was weird. Okay. I think it's because I was in the middle of a game. Okay, saved. Okay, now we should be good. Okay. So if I hit continue here, let's go ahead and load it up. This person has cleared the game 23 times, as you can see. 
Okay, so there's different game modes we could load up here. So we have replay mode. This basically loads up the game, carrying over all of your experience and BP that you had from when you previously completed it. And it's it's relatively easy. You're in good good condition, enemy levels easy, and the and the supply level is rich. This is basically like playing the game again, but now you have a ton of experience and BP that you start off with. Okay, so it says collect bonus items each time you clear the game in replay mode. So all you got to do is complete the game once, and it's basically easy mode, and you get 10% of your final experience and B BP. Okay? So yeah, it's not the full amount, it's just 10%, apparently. Okay, next one, bounty mode. Mission level, it is normal now. It goes up a little bit. The um, enemy level is strong, and there's a bit harder enemies and di a diff a difficulty here. Again, you complete the game once as stronger enemies. Golems appear at the very beginning, and you get 5% of your final experience in BEP. Up next, we have scavenger mode. So as you can see, things are starting to get a lot harder now. This is basically hard mode. Condition is exhausted. We only start with 10 MP, which is insane. And supply level, very, very, very few supplies. Actually, what did this one say? Find the hidden golem soldiers and strive for a BP high score. Yeah. Chops are bare and pickups are slim. Use your wits, not your ammo. Yes, yeah, so you can't even use ammo and you can barely use any MP. So very hard. You have to complete the game. It's also known as supportless in the Japanese version. Complete the game with over 69,000 experience points. Aya is weaker, and then items are harder to find. And then you get 1% of your final experience and BP. And then are you ready for nightmare mode? Very hard. Your condition is sick. Enemy level is very strong. And supply level is poor. So it, it's, you actually get a little bit more supplies. But you start off with very little HP. You start off with lower MP. Well, actually, the, the normal amount of M MP. You start off sick, and things get worse in this most difficult mode. So, yeah. You have to complete scavenger mode. Aya is weaker and starts off sick. Stronger enemies everywhere. 50 HP. And you get 0% of your final EXP and, and BP. So, yeah, you, you start off with no experience in BP. Only a true ma masochist would probably play this mode. To be completely honest with you, I don't, I don't know how you possibly could, but that's just absolutely insane. Now, there's a few other bonus things I want to show off. Oh, there's Pierce back there. Um, let's go ahead and just skip, skip past this. Um, that, that is enough. Okay. So... There are a few cheat codes and special weapons that I would like to show off as well that are interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So there are a lot of weird cheat, cheat codes in this game, and I, I, I don't understand the, the purpose of it. So you have your standard cheat codes of infinite HP and MP and such. You know, look, I can kind of max that out. Fully maxed. We also have max BP and EXP um, codes as well. There's another one. Go, th go through locked doors. Very interesting. Easier battles. Have all key items. Have all modes available. Infinite ammo for all primary and secondary weapons. Upgrade parasite energy to level 3 right away. Parasite energy doesn't run out, such as like energy shot, antibody. Okay, so... Here's an interesting code. Aya Matrix Mode. You press triangle and the code allows you to walk around freely while the rest of time of while the rest is frozen in time. So yeah. <laughs> interesting. Uh, invincibility. Invisible, which means you make everything invisible. And here's where some of the, the weird uh, ones are. Clear see-through menu without lines, and then a clear see-through menu with lines. So if I bring up the uh, menu here, again, what is the purpose of some of these codes? I guess I will never know, but if I turn it on, 
I mean, it's like, what is what is the purpose of this? I don't know. Or or this one. <laughs> what is the purpose of some of these codes? I don't know. And then we can also hide hide use. We can hide parasite energy. We can hide map option key item. Hide exit. Again, what is the purpose of that? Mute audio. Why? <laughs> Speed up game if you hold the R3 button. Force and cap game to 60 frames per second. That would be cool, but the problem is that the game runs at 30 frames per second, so it would be twice as fast, which is a bit of a problem. Turn screen black. I'm not going to activate that because why? Why is that a code? I don't know why that's a code. Anyway, here's some interest. Here's some other interesting ones. You ready? So let's uh, take a look at Aya here. Let's um, actually wait. Get a good, good, good look at her. There you go. Just like so. Okay, Aya, are you doing okay, ma'am? Are you doing okay? I don't know if she's doing all right. <laughs> I don't know if she's doing all right. What's the purpose of this? Of, of this? I don't know. She's now missing her arm. She has no no arm. There you go. She just grew it back somehow. Um, okay, here's another one here. Again, why? <laughs> why? I don't know, man. Who created these codes? I would like to know. And for what purpose are these codes useful in any sort of way? Okay, next one. <laughs> yeah. She can like moon jump. Okay, so that's kind of combine some codes here. Look, she has no no arm. She's spinning around. Her head's spinning around and she's doing moon and jumps. Okay. Strange, right? Very very strange. Then there's some other other uh, good ones here. Display the full map, quick draw weapon. Display ammo even outside of battle. Disable HUD outside of battle. Um, hide aiming crosshair. Skip battle intro animations. I have tried that code before, but it just has like it still has the it still has the slight freeze, so it it doesn't actually speed up anything. Hit weapon. Hit anywhere weapons, and then aim assist. So really weird, interesting codes. I must say, like, really odd. Yeah. Okay, so that is the cheat codes. And now my health has re returned to normal, as you can see. Now, there's a few bonus weapons I would like to show off as well. I did not unlock them, unfortunately. But we have to get to the, to the shop here. Let's head over to the shop. And I'm going to pick them up because, let me tell you this, they are good. They are very, very good. Head on in. Jody! Give me your weapons, woman. Let's see your list. Okay, so we have the Mongoose here. 44 caliber revolver. Slow reload, but it's worth it. We unlock this. Let's see if it has... Um, this is the... Um... I don't know if that's on my list, actually. Here it is. Rank D, or 69,001 points to 72,000 experience. So, yeah, you, you had to get rank. I don't know what rank I got, because I didn't ever m m mention anything. Anyway, here's an interesting one. The Gun Blade. Ultra high frequency particle blade. Blade with shotgun attachment. Okay. You get this by getting a rank S, more than 400,000 experience. I will be purchasing that. We're going to check check that out. You have some of this stuff here we have seen before. We also have the MM1, okay, and then re ready for probably the, the, the best weapon. 20,000 this costs. This is the Hyper Velocity Magnetic Railgun. Fires hypersonic rounds. You get this by getting a rank A and 200,000 to 400,000 experience. I will be purchasing that. We're going to quickly try out both of them. Every gun uses an ammo. Yeah, well, we will see about that, ma'am. Let's go ahead and head to the Acropolis Tower real quick. Get, get to some enemies and try out these amazing weapons. 
I am ready, sir. Yep, that's uh, spe speed, speed through this. Yep, there you go. Walk, walk, walk. I am, I'm here on duty. I have a gun, blade, and hyper velocity ready to go. Yep, no, no survivor, sir. Supersonic speed. Okay. So. Let us equip, you guys. Let's try out the gun blade first. And, yeah. So it has a shotgun at attachment, which means we can use, like, shotgun blast for it. So yeah, here is, here it is. She's basically, it reminds me of, like, a sword from, like, a Final Fantasy or something. But, uh, yes, let's uh, skip these cut cutscenes here. I wonder if we can get a good look at her sword. There it is. And it has a shotgun at at attachment. All right, let's, let's go it over. Yep. Something else that is different after you've completed the game once, when you go up to the phone, I can get, get through all of this. So, you can not just save, but you can also view your play data for, you know, this, this particular one. We have we have cleared the game 23 times on this save file. Here's all of our, of our max EXP and, and BP. Weapon data. We can see how many times this person has used the weapon data. And how many times they've, they've, they've used weapons. Looks like the one that they've barely used at all is the MM1. Interesting. I actually you used that one. I, probably I got it at the very end, end of the game. So really didn't use it all, all that much. But this is this particular person at least. Use this one. Use these two basically quarter the quarter of the time because this is th these are the weapons you start out with basically. Then you have PE data. How many times you've you've used your spells? This person cast energy shot the most, use healing a lot, but the ones that they use the least were combustion. Sephiroth would be jealous of that sword. Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? Kind of reminds me of like um. I don't know, but yeah, he has some something. Oh, that's right. I have to change my controls real quick. I believe I had it on type C. Okay, so we're about to approach a battle here, and I want to check out my new weapons because it's going to be good. Let me tell you this. No, I don't want to. Okay, so the first battle is going to be down these, these steps. I want to see how she hits with these. I should have bought some shotgun ammo, but yeah. Oh well. What what you gonna do, right? Something else that I can also do. We have a lot of experience. You can come in here. Max them out. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the cheat code. Cheat code, infinite experience, please. In max max EXP. There it is. There we go. So yeah, we can max out all of our skills and we can ta test them out. Although I will have a much better test momentarily. But yeah, we can come in here, max them all out. We didn't, we never actually saw Inferno. This was not not one that I unlocked because I never actually increased combustion anymore. Advanced Inferno uses radioactive isotopes to set off nuclear fission, reduces targets to piles of molecules. Let me tell you this: I've tested that out at max level. It is extremely good. Okay. Max max all these suckers out. Like so. Look at that. Full, fully max fully maxed. Okay. And you know what? Um let's see. Okay. Oh no. Aya, where'd your blade go? Where did her blade go? She's missing her arm. She's missing it. Look at her. Look at her trying to battle like this. Look. Oh yeah, what, what are you doing? You're absolutely insane. Yeah, let's tur turn that cheat code off. It's just, that was just kind of funny to me. I guess this person has the volume off. There we go. Yep, we can use the sword. I 
And we can also u u use it as a shotgun as well. Anyway, I want to check out the first boss here. And I'm going to use my other weapon, the high hyper velocity. So the gun blade, really, really cool. But now it's time to check out the hyper velocity. It, ha it is, it charges up on b a battery. So we have one 100. I cannot t test it outside of battle, but look at this beast. Look at this thing. Let me see if I can get a closer view. Do you see this? Look at this thing. This thing is massive. But not only is it massive, it is extremely slow. I don't know if it mentions it. The rate of fire is 7. Um, 110. Um, this one doesn't have a rate of fire. But, um, yes, this thing is extremely slow, but we're going to test it out on this boss here. Oh, I never got the key, did I? Okay, let me, let me, let me go get, get the key real quick as we carry this around. Hopefully no one is scared of us. No one should be scared. <laughs> Just walking around with this massive thing. Okay, the key's right over here. Don't shoot. F FBI. Cafeteria key. Thank you. Anyway. Let's head on over. To this boss. We're gonna have a fun time with this boss. Yes, we are. Gonna be an amazing boss. Okay, sir, I am back. The monster that did that to you is already dead. But now I'm going in in here. Alright, first boss. Check out our brand new weapon. Hey ma'am. Beast, you ugly woman. Okay, see how long that took to charge, but how much damage it did? 4,440. It is literally a one-hit kill. It is a one-hit hit kill. It doesn't matter what it is, but it is a one-hit hit kill. There you go. So, let me see if I can test it on, like, a normal en enemy. It was di different somehow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta investigate this first. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the probe. There you go. Okay. Let's, ch let's check it on these normal enemies and I'll show you why this is a problem. See? You can't really get a hit off because they're... It's just... Oh, I wonder if I powered up. Like, just how much it would actually uh, do damage to them. Look how long it takes to turn. Okay, wow. And it attacks everything ahead of it. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, a spray can. What is that? Yeah, it's pepper spray. Okay. It's interesting how early on a lot of the items were like mysterious and you couldn't actually like you, you didn't know what they were but then la later on they basically just told you what they all were so anyway now what i'm gonna do is is i want to show you the maxed out parasite ener energies let me create let me have my save file here Give me import um, another one here. This one is also kind of a maxed out save, but I want to show it now on, on the final boss. The, shall I say, absolutely amazing abilities of the maxed out, um, what's it called? Um, parasite ener energy. Primarily the in inferno. This will be be, uh, be the last thing that we ch that we check out here.
Okay. The last thing that we have to do, this person, I believe, I thought this person had a gun blade. Well, every, everything is maxed out. But I could have sworn that, that this person had a gun blade. Anyway. We can skip a lot of this. We, we, we're just here for the final boss. I know I, te I, te I tested it, and, and they did have a gun, gun blade, but maybe that was a, a different save. Because there were a, a few saves here. I think that is what it was. There were different saves, so I probably l l loaded up a, a, a different one. Head on down. We're about to encounter the final boss again. Except this time, I'm going to show off the amazing, maxed out... Um, where is it? That's right, hang on. I gotta... There we go. Okay. Inferno. Inferno, as you can see, there is no range for it. It's basically the entire field. Check, check this out. It does damage to all of the parts. All of it. This thing is absolutely incredible. Maxed out Inferno. Very good. Extremely good. Now that we can also do, let's try this one. Am Amphibiosis. We can kind of stun it, as you can see, and it attacks all the parts, and it's kind of stunned. We can use Inferno. We can kill all the parts with ease. I mean, it's just amazing. You just keep on casting it. I think it's dead. Actually, not a quite. It has to op open up. There you go. Open up, buddy. And now that you're a stunned son, let's um, do a light. Not only that, life drain. Check this out, too. How much health that we get get from that? But yeah, this is absolutely in in incredible. It really is. It just does so much damage. Now that this this boss is ba basically dead. So, yeah, I just kind of wanted to show that off because I just found this to be so cool. When it's all like maxed out like this, just just messing around with with the different skills and everything. That does 300. How much does this one do? Oh shoot, you closed up, man. There we go. There. Eh, only only one 180. But yeah, I have max HP and MP, so I can just continuously ca cast this like like you wouldn't believe. So that was basically it. That's all I really want, wanted to show off here. I I would love to sh show out the hi the hyper velocity on this this freak of nature, but you know you know how it is. You know how it is. So. That was all for Parasite Eve 2. I really enjoyed it. Now, there is a third game in the series. That is the Black Sheep. This is the one that people do not like. This is the one that people say have ruined the series. And rightfully so, it is a very... like This, this one in itself was very different from the first game. But, um... This one still was was very liked by you know fans of the series, but it didn't ha it didn't have the same charm as as the first one for a people for a lot of the people who would like the first game. But the third game takes it to a whole new uh, level. It really does. See that that doesn't do too much there. Any anything else I can do against you? Pro probably not. I mean. Maybe this. Yeah, the best thing that th that we did was shoot it with with our machine gun that that we had before, where it did like thousands of damage. So, Inferno for uh, this enemy. 
not really the the, uh, the greatest. Does like 300 as opposed to like thousand. So, yeah, I will I will play the third one at some point, even if people may not necessarily want me to because of how bad bad it is. But <laughs> yeah, we will get to that at some point. It's for the PSP. There's actual voice acting, so I'm looking forward to not talking and voice acting every single character. So that that would be really good. So. I'll catch you later. Any final words? Aya? Aya Brea? Oh, look at that. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing, woman. You're just going to die here to Eve now. Bye-bye. She dead.